Hello explorers! So in this video we're going to name a few tips to help you in your next Namibian trip. Tip number one, join Drive Num on Facebook, link will be in the description, just to help you with the guidelines, tips and tricks, what to do, what not to do when you're planning your trip to coming to Namibia. Tip number two, the borders can be very strict. So as we said, we had a few documents ready before we went through and everything went smoothly. So we had certified copies of our passports, ID documents, driver's license. We had our vaccine certificates printed. We had the Bucky's Nartis ready and a form or a document from the insurance company stating that we may take the Bucky cross border. Tip number three. Collect as much as possible two rand coins or two Namibian dollar coins as the bathrooms has turnstiles and you have to buy two, uh, pay two rand before you may use the bathroom but it is so worth it because the bathrooms are really clean so I don't mind paying the two rand just to go and pee pee. Tip number four for the South Africans do not bring your own bry wood. As soon as you cross the border there are fueling stations and there are enough wood to buy for your first night's braai. Tip number five. South Africans, we like our fruit and veg, but just a heads up that the fruit and veg here in Namibia is much more expensive, but the quality is still good. So we saw in Luderitz, there weren't any tomatoes available in the spa, but just outside the spa, there's these small local stalls that sell tomatoes and it's in good quality. And I would suggest support local. Tip number six, SIM cards or Wi-Fi in Namibia. So we didn't activate our roaming and decided to only use the free Wi-Fi available at restaurants and accommodations. The problem with the SIM cards is you can only buy it Mondays to Fridays at MTC or the post offices. And when you buy it there, you have to show any form of identification document. So it's passport or ID. And then you have to give in a declaration, stand by the police station, confirming who you are. Because you have to rika or fika the SIM card before you can use it. So, tip number seven. The main languages they speak in Namibia, they are Afrikaans, English, German, Shiwambu and Khoisan. Locals here really appreciate it if you can say one or two words in their language. If you don't want your holiday to end up like this ship, follow these tips and tricks. Tip number eight. We found that there's more than enough fuel stations along the way on the main roads. Our bucket is not the lightest on fuel, but we managed to get to all of them. And just remember, the fuel stations in the smaller towns close at nine at night. Tip number nine. Most places accept cash and card, but you need the actual card because the tapping function doesn't work at all of the shops. Tip number 10. If you don't want to end up dry like the Namib Desert, please ensure you have enough drinking water in your vehicle if you're traveling long roads between towns. Tip number 11. We found that downloading the Google's offline maps was more than sufficient for us. We had an actual printed map that we never used, so download your pieces of Google Maps. Tip number 12. We were overprepared and bought an extra spare tire but most of the fuel stations along the way has a section at the back where they can repair your tires. Tip number 13. Remember if you plan to go into the dunes, remember to bring your recovery gear like your snatch trap and your tracks because most of the places in the desert doesn't have any signal. Tip number 14. Remember to pack for all seasons in one day. Because when you wake up in the morning it's cold, in the afternoon it's hot and then at night it's cold again. So pack enough warm clothes. Tip number 15. The locals told us that August and September is the peak season. We didn't know that and saw a lot of foreign tourists over this time. So if you want the cold in Namibia experience, come to during June or July. Or if you are strong and willing to fight the heat of Namibia, come during November to January. Tip number 16. We didn't exchange any of our South African rands to Namibian dollars. You can use the South African rand in all over Namibia. When you draw money from the ATMs, you might get Namibian dollar or you can get South African rand. Tip number 17. Alcohol. May you take alcohol through the border or not? 
so we suggest leave everything buy it in Namibia and you can buy alcohol 24 7 at any grocery store at any garage store at any supermarket it doesn't you don't need to go to a liquor store to find some alcohol tip number 18 I highly suggest to work in a rest day these long distance drivings are so tiring and draining you need to work a rest day in your itinerary if you're coming for two weeks work in a rest day if you're coming for three weeks work in two rest days it will help you so much to enjoy the holiday even more tip number 19 if you're driving your own vehicle or a rental vehicle in namibia always make sure your headlight is on doesn't matter if it's day or night if they catch you without your headlights on you will get a fine so remember always drive with your headlights on tip number 20 so we have been planning our namibian trip for the past year and nine months i would suggest Give yourself two years book your trip because the most popular accommodation fill up quickly so to avoid disappointment do it well in advance okay guys so our tour de nam road trip consists out of 14 sleeps where we spent 12 nights in namibia we entered here at Vuelstrif Noordover and continued to Ausenker where we spent two nights next to the orange river at Norochama river resort the next morning we went grocery shopping at Spoor and then we took the gravel road for a lunch at Canyon Roadhouse because we wanted to watch the sunset at Fish River Canyon. Definitely a must do. The next morning we hit the road again, tar road all the way to Gerip Wild Horses and Gerip train station. Put this on your bucket list. Then all the way to Luderitz, where we spent two nights in Kormorant House, right next to the ocean. The next morning, we visited Kolmanskop, the spooky and scary abandoned ghost town that was previously a diamond mine. That afternoon, we visited Dias Point, beautiful with sunset. Then the next morning, we took the road back and the C13 gravel road all the way all the way to Beta Camp where we filled up hit the road again all the way to Sesrim guys this was one of the best stops on our itinerary we spent two nights at Desert Quiver Camp we filled up at Sesrim and the next morning we stand, stood in the queue to go to Sosa's Flay Dead fly, June 45, best experience ever. Then the next morning, we did the Namib Sky Balloon Safaris with sunrise. It was the most beautiful sunrise we've ever seen so far. Then the next morning, we hit the road to Solitaire where we ate the most famous and delicious meat pies at McGregor's Bakery. Then rode all the way via Wolfers Bay to Langstrand. At Langstrand we spent four nights. The first day we visited Swakopmund. Then the next day we went to Wolfers Bay, got on a catamaran, had an oyster and champagne breakfast and then went to bed because the weather was not very nice to go to Pelican Point. So the next morning we went to Pelican Point and just had a rest day at Langstrand. Most beautiful accommodation over here. So the last day, last morning, we went to Henty's Bay. We checked out this huge colony of fur seals all the way back and to the most iconic Spitzkopper that rise out of the desert. Beautiful. Then we hit the road again all the way to Vintu, where we spent one night in Blay in Stale. And that night we had dinner at Joe's Beer House. Definitely a must do, great experience, but make sure you make a reservation. Then the next morning, this long tar road, all the way to Ketmantua, just to visit the Quivertree Forest. Then, all the way 
to Grunau, where we spend our last night at Grunau Chalets and said goodbye to Namibia. The next morning, we entered at or oh, exited at Ariams Fly and Narkop. Guys, do yourself a favor, plan properly, and you will have the most spectacular road trip. Okay, so we hope these tips help you during your planning phase and making your Namibian trip even more spectacular. Thank you so much for joining us in this video, and remember to subscribe so you don't miss any other videos. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.